Hello everyone and welcome back to the Kohi Game Engine series. Today we're going to hook up input and give ourselves sort of a little bit of a faux camera that we can navigate around the scene so that we can kind of see what's going on a little bit more clearly as we continue developing the engine. I would like to take a quick second and thank the supporters of the channel, beginning with our partners, AR Slia, Wen Sheng, Caden, and Patrick. They are the partners of the channel, which is the highest tier of support for the channel, so thank you very much for that. And I would also like to thank all the other supporters listed here on the screen. Your support is very much appreciated, so thank you for that. If you're interested in supporting the channel, you can find links in the description to YouTube memberships, as well as my Patreon page, which is patreon.com forward slash Travis Roman. So first, there's a couple things that I want to go ahead and address. The first thing is this perspective matrix here. Uh, this is uh, very much hard-coded and not great, and it's needlessly generated every frame, right? So really what we should be doing is we should be generating this once, caching it, and then uh, reusing it. And on top of that, uh, it also is hard-coded to use a specific aspect ratio, which fails if we actually resize the screen. So if I run this, and then resize this screen to something oddball, right? It looks really weird, right? Because it's not actually using the correct aspect ratio. Okay, so let's go ahead and actually fix that first. So the first thing I'm gonna do is the projection needs to go ahead and be saved to the render system state. So I'm gonna put a uh, map for projection here, okay? And then the very first thing I'm actually gonna do is I'm actually gonna take this code and when we first stand up the render system, right before we return true, I'm going to say uh, state pointer projection equals mat4 perspective. And I am gonna use these hard-coded values, right? Um, and this is just uh, initially so that uh, we have something to actually use here, right? Some sort of default. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take a copy of that and I'm gonna come here to this resize and before we call the backend resize, I want to go ahead and uh, regenerate our projection matrix here. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and do the same thing, set this to mat4 perspective. However, I'm going to take the width and divide it by the height and I'm gonna convert this one to F32 so that we don't lose uh, that float calculation here, right? We'll have eventually configurable near and far clipping planes. You know what, in fact, let me actually go ahead since we're in here and set that up now. So I'll say F32 near clip and I'll set that to 0.1F. And I'll go ahead and take a copy of that and rename this to far clip and we'll set that to 1000.0f. And obviously you can't do that here, so I'm just going to do that. This way I can very easily, oops, come down here and say state pointer near clip and far clip and set those there, right? And actually, let me move these above this, right? So now we have uh, those set with some uh, defaults. We'll eventually wind up having a way to be able to configure that. And now here, we can actually pass the state near clip and state far clip. And I'm actually just gonna copy this and come down here and do the same thing here. Okay. So now anytime we resize the screen, um, our projection matrix will be regenerated. That means that we can get rid of this line altogether. And instead of passing projection here, we now pass state pointer projection. Okay, so let's go ahead and test this real quick. We'll go ahead and build. And let's go ahead and run. And we see it looks fine here. And if we were resized to something really ridiculous, we'll see that that square remains a square, no matter what kind of aspect ratio we have. Okay, so we know that's working. 
great. All right, so with that, uh, we're gonna go ahead and leave this model matrix alone as for now, but the one we're really interested in changing is next is this view, okay? And so uh, the view, we don't really have a way from the renderer to actually set what the view matrix is. And so I am just going to expose a setter method for this, and we're gonna store the view uh, in the state just like we do the projection, right? That way we don't have to um, constantly be uh, generating that every single time either, right? So for now, we'll just say um, mat for view is in the state and I'll go ahead and take this, move it up here to our state construct construction up here and I'll go ahead and change that. I'll change this back to negative 30 as a default. Okay. And I'll also change this to be state pointer view, state pointer view. Okay. So now we have a default view matrix as well. So now I can come back down here and we can go ahead and replace this view with the state pointer view and nuke all of this. Great. This is all well and good, but we still don't actually have a way to set the view. So let's go to the renderer front end and I'm going to create a void method. I'll call this renderer set view. And we'll just take in a mat for view. Nice and simple. Uh, we'll probably wind up uh, expanding this and maybe even renaming it to something else in the future, but for now, this will suffice. And all this is gonna do, whoops. All that is gonna do is set the state pointer view equal to view, okay? And this way we can actually set this uh, from the application if we wanted to. And that actually gives us the power to be able to pass in uh, a view matrix from anywhere uh, in the application, including our game, if we wanted to. Uh, obviously, we'll have to uh, expose something for the game to be able to do that, but um, that's just fine, right? So where we're actually gonna wind up putting this logic, if you haven't already guessed, is actually in our game. So we're actually gonna start using um, our test bed uh, or our game files here to actually do some stuff, right? And again, this is just a test bed game. Eventually the editor will obviously be m much more robust than this, but um, anyway. So now that we have uh, renderer set view available, let's have a look at our game. So our game has uh, really just a couple of, of simple things here, right? We're gonna use these uh, this input system here to go ahead and track um, our inputs and be able to uh, modify the camera as necessary. And we just need to provide a method that is callable from the game to set, uh, to go ahead and set that. So um, I'm actually going to institute a temporary hack um, and expose this via KAPI. And I'm gonna put hack uh, this should not be exposed outside the engine, right? But I'm gonna do this so that we have a quick and dirty way to actually set the VO, okay? Great. So uh, until we have a camera system, this is kind of the hackery we're gonna have to rely on. So in game.c, I'm going to include renderer, renderer front end, right? And again, this should not be available outside the engine, okay? I'm putting this there so that uh, we're reminded multiple times that we shouldn't be doing this, but um, you know, while we're building, sometimes it's okay to put temporary hacks in place as long as you know to remove them later. So now we can call renderer set view and we can just pass a view. 
Now, how do we go about generating a view and um, making sure that we actually have um, something that we can update every single frame, right? Well, the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to come into the game state and we are actually going to put a view matrix in the game state, right? So right next to delta time, okay? And that's where we're going to store the view for now. Obviously, once we have a robust camera system, this will not be the case. We'll be adjusting a camera. But for now, again, take this at face value. So now we can say um, game instance state, right? And uh, we'll have to cast this to game state pointer. Right, and now we can save view. Okay. And so, uh, obviously, all this casting is, is pretty ugly again, but, you know, again, this is a hack. So I'm actually going to put again in here to call out that this is a dirty hack, uh, that this should not be available outside the engine. Okay. Now, let's actually get into hooking up the input. So, the first thing that we're going to want to do is when we initialize the game, uh, we actually need to set up something for this view matrix. So um, if we go back to our renderer front end, and actually I nuked this out of here a little bit too soon. So let me just put that back. When we actually call um, game initialize, we need to say, I'm actually going to I'm going to create a game state pointer called state, if I can spell, and set it to the casted version of that state. Okay, that way we can just say state view, state view, state view, and this, we'll go ahead and set this to our negative 30.0f, okay? Great. Uh, so, why is this complaining? Right, because we have not included math. So let's go ahead and do that. Math, uh, let's go ahead and do k math on that. Okay, that should give us that, okay. All right, so uh, the next thing that we need to do is we actually need to track a position and a rotation for the camera. So again, in our game state, we are going to have a vector three position, okay? And we're also gonna have a vector three rotation. Uh, and in fact, I'm gonna call this um, camera Euler, and I'll call this camera position. Now, what do I mean by Euler? I touched on this when we did the math library, that there are different types of rotations. There's quaternions, there's Eulers, there are, there are others as well. Um, but uh, so far we have not actually used Euler rotations. Euler rotations are uh, basically your typical uh, yaw pitch roll that uh, most people are used to thinking about. You rotate on the different axes and um, you move around according to that, okay? And uh, that is actually what we're gonna use for our camera, at least in the short term. Uh, eventually we want the ability to use both, but uh, for our temporary hack here, it's just gonna be easier to set up using um, Euler angles. Uh, so that is what we're gonna do. So we have our camera position and our camera Euler here, all right? And so now what we're gonna do is we are going to say state camera position equals, and we're gonna take this, okay? And now we'll feed state camera position into that. And actually we're gonna be getting rid of this in a second, okay? 
So that's our default camera position. And our state camera Euler is going to be equal to vector three zero. Okay, just because we don't have any rotation by default. And so instead of doing this every single time, right? This whole thing every single time, we actually want to sort of have something to build our camera matrix for us. So I'm actually going to create a new sort of private function just here, um, here at the top actually. And I'm gonna say void. We'll call this uh, recalculate uh, recalculate camera view matrix, and we'll pass it the. Uh, actually, let's go ahead and just pass it the game state. Right, we already have that casted. So let's pass it that. So basically, what we're going to do is uh, we also actually need one more variable here. We need a B8 camera view dirty. And this will just indicate to us uh, when the camera has been updated, we go. We need to go ahead and call this, right? So we'll go ahead and default uh, state camera view dirty. We'll default that to true, right? To just say right off the bat before we use it, we need to um, go ahead and recalculate that. At the end of this method, we'll go ahead and flip this to false. Okay. And then uh, we'll say here, if if the camera view is dirty, we'll go ahead and do all of this. Otherwise, it just won't do anything, okay? All right. So the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is get a rotation matrix from our Euler angles, right? So we'll say mat for rotation, oops, mat for Mat for Euler X Y Z, okay, and this is going to be. It's going to take the X rotation and radians, the Y rotation and radians, and the Z rotation and radians. So we have uh, yaw, pitch, and roll, okay, and so um, what we'll go ahead and do is uh, we'll say state camera Euler X state camera Euler Y state camera Euler Z okay and this will give us a mat for rotation all right so that's the rotation we need a mat for translation and that is simply going to take the state camera position whoops forgot to actually type out translation there okay so that will just take the state camera position okay so now we have our turn a rotation and our translation now for those of you who are familiar with matrices there's also scale. However, it makes no sense to have scale on a camera. So we're just not gonna do it, all right? Instead, we are actually going to create our state view by saying mat for multiply, right? And we're going to first take our rotation and we're going to multiply that by the translation. Okay, and then as we did before, we are going to take the inverse of that. So I'm actually just gonna copy this here, right? So we'll take the inverse of that so that we have the proper um, view matrix, okay? And this is all that's gonna be required to re recalculate our view matrix. And this is again gonna be called whenever we happen to update the camera. So um, with that said, there are a couple of convenience methods that we are going to need. 
Um, and so I'm actually going to create one called a camera void camera yaw, right? And this is going to, um, this is just going to take an F32 yaw. And uh, this is technically going to be, this is, I'm going to call this amount, right? The amount to yaw it by, if that makes sense. All right, and this is going to say state need game state. State camera Euler dot X plus equals amount. Okay, and then we're also going to say state uh, camera view dirty equals true. Okay, and uh, the pitch is going to be basically the same thing, right? So we'll have the amount, except it's just going to be on the y axis, right? So this is. Uh, Yaw is basically looking up and down. Pitch, wait a minute. I have these backwards. This one should be Y, this one should be X. So yaw should be looking left to right. Pitch is looking up and down. So you need to rotate along the vertical axis for yaw and rotate along a horizontal axis for pitch. And then roll would sort of be rolling into the screen facing that way, if that makes sense, like rolling like a barrel, okay? So all we need though is uh, yaw and pitch. We actually don't care about um, we don't care about roll. We're actually not going to be using roll. However, there is the issue of gimbal lock that I brought up, and gimbal lock can happen if you exceed uh, 90 degrees. In this case, uh, the way that we have this set up, if we exceed 90 degrees in the X, right? And so we actually need to do a little bit of additional work here to safeguard against that, to keep us from looking too far and becoming gimbal locked. So the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to set a limit, right? And we're just going to get 89 degrees. Our camera Euler X is then going to be K clamped, right? We have that and we're gonna clamp that between negative limit and limit. And that is going to keep us from rotating any more than 89 degrees up or down. And that will prevent gimbal lock. Okay? So it's something we only have to do in the pitch direction, but it is super important that you don't miss this detail. All right. Now what we'll do is in our game update loop, right before we actually set the view, we will check actually we'll just call recalculate view matrix right um, and this will be it'll just take in the state okay and uh, this will not recalculate if it's not dirty so we don't have to worry about that okay so there's no sense in checking it twice we might as well just call this every single time Right, And so this will make sure that the view matrix is always up to date before we actually set it here in the renderer. All right. Now, on to the actual input stuff. This is kind of our first little bit of uh, quote unquote gameplay code, if you will, um, even though it's just an engine, but uh, this is a, an example of how we're gonna be using the systems we've put in place thus far. So the first thing we're going to do is again put another hack in, right? And we're going to check our input to see if the keys uh, are down. So if A is down or the left arrow key is down, right? So if either one of these is true, then we are going to want to go ahead and call camera yaw, right? And so. Uh, you know what, actually, instead of doing this all over the place, because this is kind of ugly, I'm actually going to once again, save a copy of this here, 
just so that we don't have to pass that around all over the place like that. So we'll go ahead and do that and that. Okay. So we can call camera yaw pass state and then the amount that we're gonna use is actually gonna be, uh, for now, 1.0f times delta time. And it might seem pointless to multiply this by 1.0, but uh, this will make it easy to adjust if we ever wanna change the speed of the yaw, right? So um, this will basically scale it uh, so that, uh, you know, no matter what frame rate you're running, it'll be a consistent rate of rotation, okay? So uh, this will actually go to the left. So obviously that means that we need to go to the right, which uh, is going to be the D key or the key right. And this is going to be a negative 1.0 F, okay? And so uh, right there, we actually have our first movement. So actually, um, before we actually continue, Let's go ahead and build this and see if this is all working. So it looks like uh, we missed a couple things here. Uh, we did not include our math, math types.h. Okay, so we've built, let's run. And we get a blue screen. Uh, let me see. I'm just holding the D key right now just to see if our rotation is actually working. And it does not look like it is. So we have messed up somewhere. So let's actually go ahead and oh, you know what? I know what it is. So anytime um, Oh, wait a minute. No, I think that actually sets view dirty is true. So that should be fine. Let's go ahead and set a breakpoint here. Uh, I'm going to skip over this for a couple frames just so that we can actually see something. Um, well, for some reason, I can't step into that. All right, I'm gonna set a breakpoint and render a view. Set view. Did we actually hook this up? Yeah, we're passing the state pointer view here. Let's actually set a breakpoint there as well. So we have our view here. Uh, however, that does not look like it has been set correctly. Yeah, so the view that's passed here is garbage. So let's see why that might be. So the view here looks okay. So this matrix looks fine. You know what? This might be a problem. I might need to, because I've made changes both in the engine and the game, I might need to just clean and rebuild. Okay, let's go ahead and run. See the view pass through this time is still rubbish. So let's, let's actually take this off for a second and go here. And I'm just gonna hold down the A key. All right. So let me actually put this breakpoint back. Let's see what is actually being set here. So that looks fine. Let's run this and I will hold the A key for a second, right? So we see that it's actually being registered here. 
and I will set a breakpoint here and see what our view looks like. So it looks like it might be valid. But what's strange is it was valid before on the very first frame and it still doesn't seem to be using it. Is that because I think this needs to be 30, not negative 30. I think, in fact, that I think that's exactly what it is. So let's get rid of that breakpoint. Yeah, that's what it was. Okay. So uh, technically, what was happening by that is because I had my pre, uh, my old value there before I actually set up the proper matrix inversion. Um, and that was obviously wrong because now it was putting us sort of on the other side and this was actually behind us. So uh, now if I press A and D, you'll note that this moves back and forth, right? So that's pretty cool. It's a little hard to see that uh, we're actually rotating um, just because, you know, it's, it's kind of uh, not as obvious where we can't move around. So let's go ahead and add a little bit more movement. So we'll go back to game. And let's go ahead and add W and up. And we'll add S and down. Okay. And we'll just change this to pitch in both cases. Actually, on second thought, I only want the up and down to actually modify that. I'm not going to do WNS. So, um, thinking about this, I would much rather... Uh, so, A and D will turn left and right, but I want W and S to actually go forward and backward. Um, but in order to rotate the camera up and down, we'll use the up and down arrow keys, right? And so we'll actually implement uh, the W and S a little bit differently. So I'm actually still going to copy this, remove these, say W and S, okay? Remove this because we don't need that. All right. And now what we're going to do is we are actually going to work with something called velocity. And this is going to allow us to additively add or to additive, additively move our camera based on what is actually pushed, right? So the first thing that we're going to do is set a couple of temporary variables, which is just sort of a temporary move speed, which I'm setting to 10 units, uh, basically per second is what this translates to. And then I'm setting a velocity that is zero, right? Um, and zero is sort of uh, the velocity for this frame, right? And then we'll add to that velocity um, along various axes as we go. So one thing that we need to think about is forward doesn't necessarily mean that we're moving along the z-axis always, right? Because if we rotate the camera some odd number of degrees, when we press forward, we actually want the camera to proceed in that direction. And we're not going to get that just by going in the Z direction. So we actually need to extract the forward vector from the, from the view, right? And so what we're going to do is technically this will be, um, It'll be behind a frame because we haven't recalculated it yet, but that'll be okay because it'll be close enough. So uh, we're going to say state view, okay? And we're just going to extract uh, the forward vector from the view matrix here, okay? And so we have that forward, right? And what we'll do is we will take 
that forward and we'll add it to velocity and we'll set that as velocity, right? So we're just basically gonna add this forward to our velocity, okay? Now the S is basically going to be the backwards equivalent for this. So I'm actually just gonna copy this and I'm gonna name this backward, right? Rename that. And then this is gonna be mat forward backward, okay? And it's basically just going to do the opposite here and then we'll add it again, okay? And so uh, the next thing that I wanna do is sort of a, uh, a strafing, if you will, which is moving directly to the left and right based on um, the camera's current orientation. And we're gonna bind that to Q and E respectively, okay? And so Q is going to be mat four left, right? So that's gonna be left, left, and E is gonna be mat four right. And that's going to extract the right vector, okay? All right, and now uh, one more thing that we wanna do is we want the ability to sort of move up and down. And the up and down in this case, we're going to go straight along the Y axis because we don't want to take the camera's rotation in mind because if we go up as far as the camera's concerned and the camera's facing down, then we're actually gonna wind up moving forward too, which is kind of weird. So in this case, uh, we don't want to do that. So we're going to bind space to moving up, at least for now, right? And all we're gonna do here is we're just gonna say, you know what, velocity.y is plus equal to 1.0f. And we're gonna do the exact opposite if the x key is pressed, right? we're just going to subtract it, right? And remember, uh, positive y is up, negative y is down, okay? All right, so what we're gonna do is we are going to check to see if there has been a positional update, okay? And if there has, uh, then we are going to go ahead and move the camera's position, right? And we're gonna do this by using the vector three compare. And we're gonna take this zero vector and we're gonna compare it against velocity. So we're gonna do this with an accuracy of about two ten thousandths, right? So uh, that'll keep us from uh, you know, moving too, too slightly, right? And so the first thing that we wanna do is we want to normalize the vector, right? Uh, because we, we don't want to be moving at crazy speeds in any direction. So we always wanna make sure that we're working with a unit vector. So the first thing that we're gonna do for this is uh, if we need to go ahead and update this, we are going to say uh, state camera position dot X plus equals velocity dot X, right? And we're gonna do the same for the Y and the Z. So Y, Z, Right, and then we're also going to say state camera view dirty equals true, right? Because we may not have um, have actually rotated, right? But we may have just uh, just moved instead, and so we need to make sure to actually set that to dirty here as well. Okay, and so I believe this actually covers all of our camera movement that we need at least for now. So I'm going to go ahead and build this. And let's run and we'll test it real quick. So we have that. So I'm gonna press the S key and that moves us back way too fast. And I'm gonna hold the uh, W key and that moves us forward way too fast. So I actually need to apparently clip that down some because that's, <laughs> that's way too fast. So let's go ahead and set this move speed. Let's go ahead and clip that down to about 10 by a factor of 10. So we'll set that to one. Wow, that's still really fast. Oh, I know why. Because I did not actually use my move speed in my calculation here. I just added velocity directly. So what this actually needs to do is this needs to be times temp move speed times delta time. And that will scale it both by time and the move speed that we have up here. So this actually should still be 10 because otherwise it's gonna to be too, way too slow. 
let's build. And now you guys can see how important that scaling actually is. So now if I move backwards, it's much slower, right? It might actually still be too slow, but uh, I can still strafe. In fact, yeah, that is too slow. Let me let me scale it up some. Let's make it five times faster. Okay, let's go ahead and run this. So now we can see here we have decent movement. We can rotate, we can strafe, and you can see as we sort of strafe and rotate and strafe and rotate, uh, we get a more and more condensed view of that plane, right? And so we can actually do this, and now we're looking at the back of it, and if we keep holding, we'll come around the other side and we can see the front of it. Um, the other thing we can do is we can go up and look at it from top down, right? So we can sort of just move around like this and um, look at it from all different angles. Now, again, this is kind of a plane, so it's a little bit uh, difficult to sort of fully visualize all of the 3D-ness that's going on here, but uh, I can tell you by looking at it, it is all working as expected. So now we have the capability to navigate our scene with a camera. And obviously, as time goes on, we will make this camera system much more robust because uh, it works, but it's, it's very hacky right now. But uh, once we build a formal camera system, um, this will make a lot more sense and be much more flexible and capable of a lot more. So anyway, with that, uh, that is where I'm going to end this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you are learning from this series. Please feel free to leave any comments or questions in the comments below. Feel free to give the video a thumbs up. If you haven't already, consider subscribing. Hit the little bell notification there to get updates as to when new videos in this or other series drop. And I will see you guys next time.